Well, I should be careful what I say in this review because the author of Angry White Pajamas, Robert Twigger, gave one of my books a very good review a few years back. That's uh, 12 Years at a Japanese Temple. I did just give a plug there, um, which is on Amazon. Um, yeah, but I'm going to, yeah, this this book, I really enjoyed it. So the books I review I like anyway. I can't really see the point in reviewing something I didn't like. So... Yeah, when this came out, when this came out in England, it came out in '97, um, and it was uh, it was a bestseller. It was very popular, and it's just because England, you know, we're a bit backward, so uh, it was just on the cusp of the internet sort of taking over. So still, we had to learn about especially like martial arts and the Far East and stuff. It was still very, it was kind of exotic and stuff. So, um, and Twigger lifted the the lid on this sort of. Aikido training course with the Tokyo Riot Police, as they as he called them, um, which he did for the best part of a year. I think it might have been eleven months. Uh, I think four or five hours a day, five days a week. Um, now Aikido is often sort of laughed at as being a sort of um, like more like well, this isn't this is what people say. It's not me saying it, but. Aikido, they say it's like a dance or something. It's, it's not, it wouldn't work in real life, blah de blah de blah And it, it can look very ornate and um, fancy with flower arrangements in the dojo and hanging scrolls and stuff. It's very aesthetic. Um, but uh, this is like, I don't know, Aikido, should we say Aikido without all the frills and basic Aikido, which he does. He's Robert Twigger, he, he, he's, he amps up just how, how painful and grueling and stuff it is. Um, and straight away they've got, I think he won some, Robert Twigger, he was, um, he, he won some poetry competition once that was a lot, that was, it was arranged through Oxford University or something. So straight away they got the fish out of water thing, you know, when it works quite well to put someone into another world that they're obviously out of their depth kind of thing. So they had it, well, Looking at the one of the, the, the covers here, Angry White Pyjamas. Um, so a scrawny Oxford poet takes lessons from the Tokyo riot police. Now, when I, I mean, I've been in Japan now 12 years, and I thought, you know, Tokyo riot police? What, when was the last time Tokyo had a riot? But I've since found out they do things like they provide um, uh, they, protection for celebrities and visiting politicians and all this sort of thing. So, that's why they do this intensive course, and yeah, they say it's, as I say they say it's aikido, but uh, it's not the sort of um, free flowing sort of guys wearing dresses and stuff. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's, and Robert Twigger describes it. You just do break falls and stuff till you're you're bleeding and there's some injuries and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, he Twigger was accused of. Um, exaggerating just how difficult it is um to which he basically replied okay then you go and do it um which is probably not going to happen for anyone who criticizes the book so we're not, not going to move to japan live in tokyo and do the course um there was one incident in in the book he's he describes being at this bar and like this near fight mass fight breaks out between some foreigners and some japanese and he kind of saves the day and stuff like that. It just it just struck me as being. It probably had. It, there probably was some sort of um, problem in a bar, but stuff like that. It's, it just it just, it just didn't sound right. I've worked in a guys in bar. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I do think he probably he did everything to the max. He's describing what was probably a bit of an argument in a bar, and next it was he's trying to describe it like shoot out the OK Corral. Um, so. But I mean, he's got to, he's got to sell the book, and there was probably there was a bit of poetic license. I mean, the the great pappy on you know Henry Charrier, the guy who escaped from Devil's Island, I mean, seventy five percent of that is crap, or may or may or may not or made up. You know, he exaggerates all these things like years spent in solitary confinement and stuff. Anyway, that's another book. But uh, yeah, so probably what's it? Was it Chopper Reed said the Australian legendary Australian criminal never let the never let the truth get in the way of a good story. But anyway, Robert Twigger did, did he did do the course, the the Aikido near year long course, and I mean at the time I think this is in ninety five. It was published in ninety seven. I think I said that. 
I think he was 30 years old in 95, teaching English in Tokyo. And by now, just completely disillusioned with it, which I can fully understand. I've taught English. And one another tagline, apart from, was um, in the book, was, uh, I think this is it, trying to, trying to translate um, rap lyrics to giggling teenage schoolgirls. So these, these are the sort of, um, he's teaching, you know, he's teaching kids English. And uh, it's funny when I read that, it reminded me when I was teaching what they call Juku. It's like a cramming class. The kids come after school in the evening and it was Christmas time. It was one Christmas and these, actually these two girls come to me like, oh, sensei, you know, they've been listening to Wham, George, you know, George Michael's old band when he was in England. I don't know how famous they were in the rest of the world, but there was a hit single like, oh, last Christmas I gave you my heart, the very next day you gave it away. And one of these girls like said, like, what? I gave you my heart. And she, she mind like pulling out of her chest. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, how, how do you explain like a metaphor? Anyway, so that's by, by the by. I don't know why I went into that particular anecdote. But yeah, that's just one thing he says. He's trying to, you know, he's translating lyrics and he's basically completely sick of teaching English. It, it, it can get pretty banal and grueling. Um, and you're basically just some sort of foreign, you're viewed as being a foreign clown because teaching English here, you've got to be like Ey! all the time. It's um, a bit weird. I don't know what it is. You've got to be like a super smiley person all the time. It's weird. Um, so yeah, he, they, they, him and a few of his mates, they live in this tiny apartment in Tokyo and he's, you know, he's drinking too much and he says he's, he's shaking from the sheer amount of coffee and cigarettes and stuff he's doing. So he, he wants to get fit and he's feeling the whole turning 30 thing. Which is something I'm, that's a few years by me now, fortunately, I'm 45, but I never got the whole, oh, I'm nearly 30, I'm turning 30. And it's, I felt 40, all right, but no, I didn't like that, but 30, I really didn't notice. But anyway, but to him, it's kind of a deal. So you get this whole backstory, basically, of his own psychology and his circumstances, and spending too much time in bars and stuff, and that being a guide in here, foreigner, that can happen. Uh, so, first of all, they start doing this course. Just taking a few lessons a week. And he says it's the first time the neighbours sort of try and talk to them, the Japanese neighbours who've kind of been avoiding them. But they're like, oh, you, they see the, the white, and so the, the pyjamas, the pyjama like uniform hanging outside when they've washed them. So, oh, you're doing judo. And he um, says, no, no, Aikido. And, and then they go, oh, and he, he, he says if he hopes it impresses any girls, it just falls flat because <laughs> so he says, doing um, Aikido out in Japan was like being viewed as being about as sexy as, you know, if you were living in England, an English woman, if you told her she, you were doing a Morris dancing, which is the traditional English dancing, like folk dancing, you know, you, you hold all these bells and stuff and dance around and wave ribbons. Uh, I think it looks quite nice, but yeah, it's probably not, when you're young, when you're, young it's probably not going to impress the opposite sex too much. I don't know, might, might do in certain areas of England, I don't know. Anyway, but... um. They do that for a bit, and then he and a couple of his friends, I think, they they sign up for the full on course, and yeah, he just sort of describes his progress through it, and it's always like if you can just hang on in there, and they're they're trying to address their wounds and all this sort of thing, and there's just, there's the accusations he exaggerates a bit, which went on four five time four five hours a day, five days a week. God, would it be that bad? Uh, I don't know. I've done some pretty intense training, but I don't know. I mean, I haven't done it, so I can't comment on it. Um, but the two rest days would be a big, big, big bonus. But he does do things which I can well em emphasize. Wh emphasize? Oh, jeez. I can't even speak English anymore. I, I can well um, <laughs> sympathize with. Like, he describes one lesson. I think the teacher just asked him to sit in Caesar, which is the traditional Japanese way of kneeling. Like it just, so sometimes these things would happen. They wouldn't do any exercise or something. They just have to sit there or kneel where if you're, uh, you're, you basically you kneel and your, um, your ankles are underneath your buttocks. Ankles, sorry, heels, sorry. Your heels underneath your buttocks. I can do about 20 seconds, literally. And they've just got to sit there for, I think it's nearly an hour. And then on the command, jump up. They used to be an old karate thing. I've seen that. He, my old karate teacher in England, I, I've seen videos back in the 70s when we started this class. But you know, it was proper hardcore karate. And if, in those days, if you got a black belt, you you deserved it. Um, they'd sit in Cezar and they'd go, and they'd all just leap up. 
And there's, I think he says Robert Twigger. It's been a while since I read the book, but I've read it a few times. And he says you run the risk of you know breaking your legs because you just jump up and all your legs are just numb. You might just collapse again. Your legs just break, you know, because you can't feel them. So it's a certain thing. I mean, he and the, the techniques he describes and stuff. I mean, he definitely did do it. There's no doubt about that. Um, he went through it, and uh, well, I shan't give the the, the, the sort of the the goal, as it were, that the training for is to get the black belt, is to get the black belt at the end of the course. And I shall not give the game or give it away as to whether or not he got it. I should leave that to the, uh, yeah, to um, encourage you to read it. Um, so it's a great, I, I think someone else, did, uh, recent, uh, not recent, about a, a year back now, got those random suggested posts on Facebook advertising things and, Someone else had written a book about they they'd done it, but they were charging like this is the they were charging like lot I think it's about fourteen dollars for their book. And when you're an unknown author, it's, that's too much. I might have got it if it was a bit cheaper, but it's a lesson there, people. When they they do something, they go, oh, you know, I definitely deserve to tell my story. And people, when you're actually trying to sell stuff outside of friends and family, so I'm I'm going on here a bit, but I I write books, I sell them. Probably a bit competitive, the pricing. So anyway, I didn't read it. Um, so I've not, basically what I'm saying is I've got nothing else to compare it to. I've not seen any of the same, someone else has done the same course or something. Uh, so basically there was the, there was the accusation he'd exaggerated some, uh, how hard the course was. And um, certainly I said that, that, I said earlier that, that oh, I, I, you know, I stopped a massive brawl in a bar and stuff. That sounded just, it didn't ring true. Um, but apart from that, I mean, these are little minor quibbles. On the whole, the book is solid. He's he's a great writer, and it's 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 a really good. Certain things, especially for anyone who's who's been to Japan or knows anything about it, it's a, it's a great things about just Japanese life and the sort of people he meets and stuff. Um, it's a it's a really good summarization of being foreign and living in Japan, and um, yeah, so he just does this course, and then it's the. the Willy Wonty thing about the black belt at the end, um, and there's a well, whether or not he gets it, there's a bit of stuff afterwards. Basically, just to, to come down after a nearly a year training this <clears throat> this hardcore Aikido course. So people people seem to say rude things about Aikido, all these sort of martial arts YouTube experts and stuff. But I don't know. I've tried a bit of. Some, I didn't think it was that. Oh, it was all right. Just a lot of locks and stuff. And flowing movements. And plus Aikido as well. Who's that? Oh, Steven Seagal, isn't that? That's the thing that puts me off because I can't stand that prick. <laughs> anyway, that aside, uh, yeah, but I wouldn't review any book if I didn't really like it anyway. And um, I really enjoyed Angry My Pajamas. I'm going to read it again sometime. Um, really good book, yeah. Check it out.